Welcome back. So I just had you work on these three problems and um, we're going to go over the answers and then we're going to do one more problem. So first of all, how many pairs of, well, let's just think about problem six. You've probably realized that it was very similar. You, well, you probably got the same answer as another problem. <clears throat> so you probably realize that it's exactly the same as the balls and urns problem with two urns and ten balls, right? Um, Non-negative integers means you can drop anywhere from zero to ten balls in one of these urns, but the total number of balls you drop needs to be ten. So you should have got the exact same answer as you got for, as we did in the other example, which was eleven. And so now in the next problem, um, if there are three, if it's triples A, B, and C, becomes the balls and urns problem with still 10 balls and with three urns. So once again, you should have gotten the same answer. I think that was 66. Now, the last one is not quite so easy. So notice the thing that changed is now the three integers A, B, and C need to be positive integers. So if we think about the balls and urns problem, that would be equivalent to saying you're still dropping balls in, but you need to have at least one ball in each urn. So the way I would solve this problem um, is to say, okay, we have 10 tennis balls, but we know that each one, there has to be a positive integer of tennis balls in each, so let's first drop those three balls in. So now we are left with seven balls in our hand and there are still three urns and we want to drop the seven balls into the three urns so it just becomes the balls and urns problem with seven balls and three urns another way of thinking about it if you like is you could say um, let's solve the new problem with a prime plus b prime plus c prime equals to 7. And once we solve that problem, to get a, b, and c, we just add 1 to a prime to get a, add 1 to b prime to get b, and add 1 to c prime to get c. So um, these two are kind of pictures of the same thing, but what it boils down to is it's the balls and urns problem again. So if you think about it, uh, we want to have, if you convert it to stars and bars, you want to have two stars, and you want to have seven stars somewhere in here. And so the formula for that is, since there are nine total objects and we're choosing two to be bars, it's nine choose two, which is 36. So that's that problem. Okay, here's the next problem we're going to solve. And this is from the AIME. Amy is a... Uh, is the next level after the AMC competition. So you qualify by getting a good score on the AMC 10 or AMC 12. And it's 15 problems and they are quite a bit harder. They take more time than the AMC. And there's three hours total. So in this problem, you kind of need to take some time just to figure out what it's saying, but you can read it for yourself and I'm going to rephrase it in my own words. So a snake-like integer is an integer if you think about, let me do a drawing. Um, if you think about numbers going up, if you think about the numbers 1, 2, 3, and going up to 9, a snake-like integer starts at a low number, a low digit, goes to a higher digit, comes back down to a low digit, and then goes back up to a higher digit. And what matters is that between these two digits, it first goes up, and then it goes down, and then it goes up again but it could also be a pattern something like this, right? That's okay. So there are different ways you can get snake-like integers. So let me just write out a few examples. Um, so one, three, two, four would be an example of a snake-like integer. It goes up, then down, then up. Oh, uh, specifically we're asking for um, snake-like integers with four distinct digits. So you can't repeat digits, and also it needs to be between 1,000 and 9999, so we know it can't start with a zero. That, that um, 
because if it's zero, it would be a little bit confusing. Um, so here's one example. Another one is three, four, one, seven. And a final example is six, eight, zero, one. So notice that we're allowed to have zeros in the number. We just can't have a zero in the first spot. But because zero is kind of in a in a weird place, it can't be in the first spot, but it can be in one of the other spots. We are going to <coughs> divide into two cases for this problem. So in case one, cases, in case one, we're going to say that all the digits are between one and nine. And in case two, we're going to say that there is a digit zero. So we're going to divide into two cases. And in this video, I'm just going to show you how to solve case one, and I'm going to leave case two to yourselves to do. <coughs> so in case one, we have we want to count the numbers with four distinct digits chosen out of one to nine, but they have to be snake-like when we choose them. So um, we can't just choose them in any order. Now the question is, um, you know that this is a section on bijection, so the question is how do we solve this with a bijection? So what we're going to do is we're going to create the following bijection. We're going to take a snake-like integer here, let me say it another way. So on this, we have two sides. On this side, we have snake-like integers. And on this side, we have four sets of four digits. Four digits. Um, so as an example, we can say that the set uh, one, three, five, seven, is a set of four digits. And now from 1357, we want to ask how many snake-like integers can we make? So um, there are five ways to do that, it turns out, if you think about it. So I'm going to draw the four, um, one, three, five, and seven as four different levels. Actually, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, I don't want to draw it out, but I just want you to think about it. So, so suppose we had four different levels. How would we then form snake-like integers? Well, one is you to start from the lowest number, go up to the third, come down to the second, and go up to the fourth. So in this case, that would be the number 1357. You could also go from one all the way to the highest, down, and then go up. So that would be 1735. Or you could start from the second highest, and do something like this. So this would be 3517. You could also do 3715. And finally, you could start from the third highest, in this case 7, and go 75, or sorry. So you start from the third highest, which is 5, and go 5713. So it turns out, as you can probably see, that for any set of four digits, distinct digits, we can make five snake-like integers out of that. So this is not uh, so. This is a special type of bijection where instead of having a one-to-one -one correspondence, we have a one-to-five correspondence. So we can group the snake-like integers on this side into groups of five, and then match them up with sets of four digits. So now we're ready to solve case one. So case one, we first count the number of ways to choose four digits between one to nine. So that would just be nine choose four. And then we multiply by five. And um, I forget the answer to this, but I'm sure you can do it by yourself. And so calculate that out right now. And that will be your answer for case one. And then I'll ask you to think about case two, and in the next really brief video, I'll finish this problem.